Hello and welcome back. Before we start loading data in our data lake house, we need to understand few utility functions that are important for our session. We will start with run date. Since our data load is in daily batches, we will use run date as a batch date. The date format for run date is yyyymmdd. For our session, we will load the full data or the first load using the batch date or the run date as 2022-0101. All other run dates would be the incremental load. Run date is going to help us identify for which batch date we are loading data into our DW tables. Next is the job control table. It is a very important table as it logs the execution status of our pipelines. But there is one more important feature of this table. This table will help us identify whether a load is a full load or a incremental load. If you see on my screen, this is the schema of the job table. We'll have schema name, table name, max timestamp, which is the timestamp when the table is getting loaded, run date for which batch date we are loading the table and insert date when the data got inserted in the job control table. Usually the max timestamp and the insert date will be the current timestamp of the system. Consider the example, the store staging dimension got loaded on 5th February at 8.11 with the run rate of 2022-0101. Now the next pipeline of the store staging will always run with a filter of timestamp greater than this max timestamp. This will allow us to read the data in incremental fashion. There can be one more scenario where we don't have any data inside the job control table for the store staging. In that case, we will return a default value of 1900 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. This would be the default load timestamp that would be used in the filter condition, which will allow us to read all the data from the landing layer to the staging layer, which will act as a full load. Now we are within our JupyterLab environment. We'll open the library files jobcontrol.py. We have the functions already written here, which will do the necessary job. The first one is to insert the log. If you can see, the parameters are Spark Session, Schema Name, Table Name, Max Timestamp, and Run Date, which is similar to the fashion of the table that we created. It will read the data from the provided parameters. These are the columns of the table. It will create a data frame. It will create the necessary columns required and would write the job control table in append mode. Once the process is successful, it will return true. Else, in any case of any exception, it will return as false. The next function is to get the max timestamp. This function would help us to create the filter for incremental loads. We will read the job control table. Then we will use the group by statement based on the schema name and table names that are passed as parameter and will calculate the max timestamp. We will check if we got any record inside the calculated data frame. If there is no record, then we will return a default low value which will help us for the full load or the first load. In case there is a data, we will return the same in string format. Next is the delete log and the truncate logs function. This would help us to maintain our data lake job control table. Delete log will help us to delete any entry of the table from the job control. Truncate logs will completely truncate the job control table. Next in line are certain utility functions that we are going to use. The date data utility function is going to generate us the dummy date data that we are going to use for our lake house. We are not going to use any source file for our date dimension. This date data function is going to generate the data for our purpose and we will use the data to load in our date dimensions. Next is the get string columns. It will usually take a data frame and would return the string casted columns that would help us to cast all the columns of the landing to string. Get run date function will read the run config.txt file which will hold the run date or the batch date for which we are going to run the batch load. It will return the run date. The final utility function is written for AWS S3 management. We are going to use Boto3 to manage the landing and the archive files. The first important function in this utility is archive landing object. This function will be called once we read the landing file to move it into the archive file. The file would be read from the landing directory and would be moved to the corresponding archive directory. 
The second is the archive wildcard landing object. This would help us to read multiple files from landing and archive them respectively to their respective location in S3. We have already come across the spark session.py file in our previous video. We have get spark session function which will help us to generate a spark session and return the same. Here is the run config.txt file. This file will have the run date for which we are running the batch load. For the full load, we are going to use 2022.0101. For further incremental loads, we will start changing this value and start loading the data. Today we discussed all the utility functions that we are going to use in our further sessions. This utility functions will help us to maintain the code and to reuse the same code again and again as we move towards the end of our course. Keep learning, keep growing, keep sharing.